Just arrows and more of those bows. I don't really feel like collecting even more of them. Okay, we're going to quick save because otherwise that combat music is never going to stop. Nice. Well, I suppose we should continue traveling up this way on the side of the valley. Maybe there's something up here of interest before going down into the valley itself and approaching the Firewine Bridge. Some cacti there. Oh, there's a fellow out here all by himself. Benton. There's also a marker. Firewine Bridge. I don't know. Looks like a warrior. Go talk to him, Minsk. Oh, there. I am Benton, most devout follower of the Rick Broken Ill Mater. I wonder if any of you do follow the path of the Crying God. <sighs> Carrot would probably say, he would be frank and say, no, none of us worship Ilmater. So none of you venerate Ilmater. Well then, we must rectify this at once. Listen closely while I tell you the wonders that will come once you have converted to Ilmater's faith. Now, as you've probably heard, Ilmater is the god of suffering. Most people immediately perceive this as the suffering one must endure themselves. But trust me, the stories you have heard are most likely wild and unrealistic. Suffering in the service of Ilmater does eventually come, but lo, and is the most joyful of sensations, and opens your eyes to wisdom. Once you have suffered in the service of Ilmater, you will have your eyes open to the evils of the world, evils such as avarice, greed, lust, perversity, and most especially magic. By magic, I mean not the holy power granted by Ilmater, but rather the wicked powers wielded by sorcerers. Uh, huh. Carrot would just kind of just scratch his head. And, uh, hmm. What would he say? <laughs> no, he, he wouldn't object. He'd just say, keep talking. All you have to do is become a faithful of Ilmater to cast off your worldly possessions. You will wander the world and suffer in the place of others. You will spread the word as I have spread it to you. Well, what think you? Will you cast off your possessions and become a faithful of Ilmater? Sarcasm. Say it's interesting, but we don't have the time or inclination, or just be polite and say sorry, but we have better things to do. Yeah, Carrot would probably just kind of <laughs> shake his head a bit and say, sorry, old man, but uh, we have better things to do. You are foolish in your decision. Your mind's obviously clouded by the numerous vices all of you must engage in. I pity the whole lot of you. Goodbye. And that is why Kerr doesn't like Ilmatans. Bunch of snobs. Suffering. Don't like arcane magic. Ugh. One more group of goofy fools and phonies to dislike. Phonies. That's what Goofith would say. Phonies all. <laughs> well, apparently this is the an entrance to uh, the Firewine Bridge itself. Well, Carrot would want to explore the perimeter before actually going into it. Apparently, uh, there's this valley here next to it. There's the actual entrance. Um, looks dangerous. Well, of course, all the uh, skeletal archers would probably be dangerous as well. There really seem to be plenty of skeletal archers around here. What kind of business do they have being here? Who, who animated them? And who gave them their halberds and their quarterstaffs? Or rather, their halberds and their longbows. It's just odd. Alright, can we go down this way? No, we can't. This appears to be a cliff. So, no. It looks like we're either crossing the bridge or we're going down into the valley this way. Care would elect that the party should descend into the valley from the side rather than trying to cross the bridge itself just yet. It might be dangerous. And Care does not like to take unnecessary risks. I really do like the fact that you can watch your characters move on the map view just to show them moving along without constantly having to scroll 
to keep up with their movements. Down we go into the valley. Let us see what the party finds. Apparently a bunch of wreckage. More wreckage. Wreckage and cacti. Oh, apparently the skeletal remains of some creature. Complete with kobolds. Uh-oh. Back away, Carrot. Back away. Kobold archers. And zombies. Well, let's hack up some zombies. So much for you, zombies. Zombies could be a lot more threatening if they gave uh, them a disease effect. Like upon strike, you have to make a save or you contract uh, the disease that creates zombies. Like something out of all the zombie movies they make these days. And uh, you have to be careful and treat the disease or your character becomes a zombie. That would be pretty funny, actually. Good as done. One of those little things a DM could do to make uh, life harder on the party, if that's indeed what they want. <laughs> do, 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 do. More ruins. Let's look over here. Apparently we can walk through this valley here that we couldn't get to before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a rather peaceful and pleasant night. Apparently we cannot go further east. Can we actually climb our way out of this valley somehow? Actually doesn't look like it. So, it looks like we're actually going to have to go all the way back here in order to be able to actually get up there. So this is a cliff. This is all cliffs. This is apparently the only way out of this cliffside. Or rather, the only way to scale the cliffside. And uh, cross the bridge itself. And see what's on the other side. And you can see to here is AI scripting. Taking her north and then west. Oh, looks like the same thing. No, oh, they're getting it. Look at the little hexagons. Walk around. Are they more circles? Actually, I think they're circles. They just kind of look like hexagons on uh, the map. Those boots of speed sure do make a difference. And there they are. Man, this party would certainly be very, uh, in a very good shape from all this walking. It would certainly exhaust people after a while. Especially in armor. With all the adventure equipment they have. Oh, there appears to be a bloke here. And so, so that's Firewine Bridge. Wow, isn't it just so grand? I wonder what it'd been like when it was actually in use. Care would say, didn't you read about it at Candlekeep, or were you sleeping that day? No, if I tried, I probably would fall asleep. Most of those history books, they try to tell history exactly as if it was too dry. Well, let's talk to this guy. Hello there. Poe. A hail and hearty hello, mine friends. A fine day, is it not? 
It was not always so serene in these parts, though, as you can no doubt discern from the ruins about us all. Tragic loss to the area it was, some three hundred years past. I have tales, though, tales of heroes and villains that have come and gone amidst the stones since that prosperous time. Could I entreat your ears to hear one? It is an epic I have been working on for some time, based on the rumors I hear and the strange things I see in my dreams at night. Would you care for a story this eve? Um, sure. Aye, it would be a fine time to hear your tale. Sing on, young bard. Wonderful. Stand relaxed, and I shall relate it to you. It is a poetic treatise I should like to call The Knights of Days Hence. Eh, I know the title needs work, but the soul of the piece is right and true. I've a tale, a tale to tell, of knights so bold in dungeon hell, and slumber broke upon the shore of Nightmare's Reef when drawn no more. A story true of courage lack, and footing lost on virtue's track, and trailing far but near to fear, a vengeance scream through night to ear. The swordsmen came by two and four To take their fight to evil's core With confidence and might and right Went bravely forward spreading light But light alone canst clear the path When suffers all a hellish wrath From deep below whence fire came Still none above dare speak the name Together thought, together fell Till hand good till good had won Those stories tell the cursed tale Of treachery when evil stole the victory Heroes hold betrayed behind From friend made foe with gold in mind To take and plunder riches won T'was evil new, though old undone in glory slept the hero's knights, but knife to throat did snuff the lights behind their eyes. A simple deed, t'was honor dead, as killed by greed. Strong enough to break a vow, alone with gold he struggled now, to leave his dungeon deed and hide. Alone he fell, alone he died. Widows weep and orphans cry, and bards oft sing as maidens sigh, for want of heroes lost below, that haunt and sleep with ghostly glow. On guard the guard eternal stand, though neither see nor sense the land, before their eyes beyond their age they wait with unbelieving rage. When one for all turns one, when one for all turns